the hope was to hear from two athletes because we heard from two coaches last month. I wanted to hear from two athletes this month, but one of our athletes is not able to be here in person because she actually works in the, the medical field as a medical assistant. So we recorded her and I figured just so you give you guys a chance to hear from her, it's about a five minute video and she's also going to be opening our time in prayer together. And so after that, then we'll, I'll introduce Shantae and then we will go from there. All right. <laughs> so funny, All right. My name's Fiona. I went to Emory University, just graduated about a year ago now. And I was on the swim team there, majored in neuroscience. And then FCA was a huge part of my undergrad experience. But I loved um, seeing God work at Emory and then specifically through FCA. FCA has been a huge part of my life. Um, so going into Emory freshman year, I wasn't necessarily um, seeking a church or that community. The coolest part about being part of a team is you have upperclassmen and older people that are instantly looking after you from the beginnings. One of the, the seniors, I think, was one of the founders of FCA on Emory, so it's brand new on Emory, um, em Emory's campus. And so from that point on, just kind of being introduced to FCA at Emory, and um, it was amazing instantly um, just finding this community that spoke about God and lived like a godly life um, in college. I, I think especially when you're in college and you're, you, you're living with people, surrounded by people, and really seeing their lives, just living in a Christ-like way that I'd never seen before. The beginning of college was a lot of being poured into, like the upperclassmen and the FCA leaders at Emory definitely challenged my faith. They asked, they were like, you want to step up to the leadership team? So again, another challenge. There were a handful of people from my class that ended up on the leadership team that year, and we all grew together. Kind of continued to be poured into as leaders, but then taking that and giving it back to um, teammates and other fellow student athletes ended up leading a Bible study. That was a big, um, another step up, another challenge. And now like those um, girls that I was leading a Bible study, um, seeing them um, take kind of how God has been working in their lives and then them going and leading um, in their own ways, seeing different parts of God in each of them. Um, has been amazing to watch them now, just who God created them to be. I think most, one of the most amazing things that I've learned is how God creates each person so uniquely different just for his own good and how he created you to be you and to show that part of who he is in a way that only you can do. And I think that's so encouraging to know it might not look like how other people are leading or how other people are living their lives or showing God in a way that could be inspiring to you, but is also, is not you. You bring something unique that only you can bring. And that, I don't know, that's just so encouraging to me. God is so like infinite that he can create so many different people with so many different traits. I think it just shows the magnitude of God, but also how creative he can be. Um, hey God, um, thank you for this time that we can all be together, though it may look really different. Um, we are thankful that we can still um, come together and in community and in fellowship, um, remember you and remember um, your name and how awesome and wonderful and good you are. And we believe that you are still um, good and you are working in and through um, this time. You are working through FCA, Lord. It's amazing to know um, what you've done already. And we remember that um, and we hold that as true. And we use that as we look forward and we hope um, in you and in the work you're doing, you are still using them um, through this time, maybe in ways that um, we wouldn't see possible. I pray that you encourage these women on this call today, Lord, that they are um, wonderful works um, created by you, Lord, and I pray that um, they are reminded of that um, in this time and that they're encouraged 
as they continue their journey um, knowing you. And I lift this um, all in your name. Amen. Amen. But with that, I would like to introduce you ladies to Shantae Lowe. Shantae and I were teammates at Georgia Tech back in the day, but Shantae has gone on to do some phenomenal things in track and field. And the reason why I specifically wanted her on, wanted to have her as one of the athletes that is speaking is because Shantae has what I would call, she has always had crazy, crazy faith. <laughs> And ever since I've known her, I've it has exuded in her personality and she'll share with you just what her journey and how what that journey has looked like during our time. But Shantae is a mother of she's a wife and a mother of three. Now Shantae, you're gonna have to list off your she, all of your awards, please, so that they know who we are in the presence of. She is and and I didn't prep her for this ahead of time. So I'm, I'm not going to ask her about the, the journey to being um, a medalist, an Olympic medalist in the high jump. But even that story and how that took place, how I saw that play out even on Facebook through her faith, I was like, what is she on spiritually? I need to get on that too. <laughs> yeah. So Shante, can you share with us like what are some of the other of the other awards that you've accomplished as far as like your records and um, world medals? Okay, so let's see. I think I'm 12 time US national champion, three time NCAA champion, indoor and outdoor American record, world championship gold, silver, and bronze, and then Olympic bronze and then four-time olympic olympian there you go sorry <laughs> wow wow so this girl knows her stuff when it comes to athletics right so i wanted to start off by getting to know you on a personal level so wife mother just like all of us here that we are you are sheltered in what is it like in the low household <laughs> what's it like in the low household well, shoot, I'd be remiss if I didn't take it back to how you talked about how we were competing together in college. This girl used to wear my butt out on the track. <laughs> Shanta was my roommate, and like her relationship with God was so convicting for me because when I first came to college, it was my first time away from, like I grew up in the church. So my uncle was the pastor, my aunt was the assistant pastor, my grandma led the choir. Like I got away with nothing. And so leaving California and going 3,000 miles across the country, I was like, yes, I finally could do what I want. And then I was roomed with Shanta. And she was like, <laughs> she's like, we're going to church. I know you went to the club last night, but you can go to the club last night. You can get your butt up and go to church the next morning. And um, she drug me to FCA. And she's actually the person who introduced me to FCA. So I just wanted to share that story. There's more of a connection there than just teammates we make each other throw up on the track but then she kept me in line and I was trying so hard to be that prodigal son and Shanta would not have it <laughs> but um in the low household right now so um we have three kids my husband and I have three kids we have um, a 12 year old daughter a nine year old daughter and a six year old son and they are the most I guess they're athletes because they're the most rambunctious, crazy crowd that you would ever meet. And um, um, yeah, we're just enjoying the time in quarantine right now, getting to spend time with each other and enjoying life with each other. Amen. So what is one blessing during this time and then one thing that you're praying through during this time? Yeah, so I think that the biggest blessing is the fact that you know, I went through a lot of stuff in the fall. And we're going to touch on that a little bit later. I know Carla knows, <laughs> but um, I went through a lot of stuff in the fall and I felt like the world was just going so fast that I couldn't catch up. And I think every day when I laid my head down on my pillow, I was like, oh my gosh, I wish I had more time. I would have done this. If I had more time, I would have done that. And I just, it seems like I never had enough time, but this time period feels like the Lord just stopped everything. And said, look, you said you would read your Bible more if you had time. You said that you would pray more if you had time. And he gave me that time. And so I'm trying to be as accountable for it as possible. The thing that we're praying through is 
I guess just, you know, balancing that, that level of understanding what's going on, but limiting the amount of negative vibes that come with it. You know, you don't want that to be your, um, what you focus on. You want to really have that faith. So balancing that faith, but still being aware of what's going on. That's good. That's good. So is there anything, so you mentioned like just that, um, it's like the consistency in the word. Is there anything else or is that the thing that you would want to continue implementing as life begins to move to a new normal? Yes. So, um, you know, I've been getting the opportunity every morning, first thing when I wake up and the Lord's been waking me up at 4.30 every morning. So I'm like, Lord. Her entire life, y'all. Like, <laughs> I wish God would wake me up at four o'clock in the morning. You know how much I could get done? But I digress. Go ahead. <laughs> He wakes me up at 4.30 in the morning and I, you know, the hardest thing is just putting your feet on the ground. Once my eyes open, I put my feet on the ground, stand up and I go out into the garage and I literally just get to talk to him and then just be quiet and listen to him. And, you know, once the world picks back up, I don't want that to stop because my, I feel so close to him. I don't have the confusion that I used to have. Like, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do this? There was so much clarity and being able to spend that time with him. And it's something that I want to continue because I've had a, my walk with God has felt like this, where you have those, those times where you're reading your Bible, going to church, doing everything. You're like, why don't I do this all the time? Life is great. And then something happens and you're like, oh my gosh, where I have to get back to that. I just want it to be consistent. So I want to keep doing this even after the quarantine's over. Yes. Amen. I could definitely definitely relate to that it's like okay daddy what are you teaching me during this time and help me to solidify it so much so that as life begins to a new normal i don't lose this you know i mean this you know that's going to be that's so important i just encourage all of you on the call to to have that and to start thinking about that and putting it into play from now you know so you just mentioned all of these all you mentioned your your athletic resume which is absolutely phenomenal and not a surprise but all of that doesn't just happen because you woke up and because you're cute (laughs) so first i would like you to let us know what's going on with you right now so the olympics were around the corner where are you athletically now yeah so right now um i'm training at home um i had a um i'm trying to look and see if that's one of your questions because i don't want to ruin it if it is (laughs) just say the first two together. You can put them together. It's okay. Okay. So, you know, in the fall, um, I actually went through chemotherapy. So um, I battled breast cancer. I actually found out that I had it last June. And the crazy thing is I came and I saw Shanta. Was that in May when I talked to you? And I was like, I feel like the Lord is telling me that I have breast cancer. Yeah. I, I literally had crazy. Hey, this, <laughs> oh, so I started changing. It's like something that it wasn't. It's just something that he was speaking to me, like, hey, Shante, you have this. So I started changing the way that I ate. Um, I quit eating sugar. I started trying to figure out what type of foods actually kill cancer before I even had the diagnosis. So I had been doing that for about a year, and I didn't know why I was just doing it. And so um, in June of 2018, what, 2019? 2019, 2019, I got, I, I just went in, I had a horrible dream that yes, you have, you have breast cancer. So I went into the doctor that week, ended up getting the biopsy. It turned out to be one of the most aggressive forms of breast cancer that you can have. But because the Lord was already telling me what to do and I was already treating it holistically, it was only stage 1A, which is the first possible stage it could be, despite the fact that it had been there for over a year. It hadn't spread to a lymph node. It hadn't spread to any other part of my body. It was just one small little um, nodule in my breast. And so, you know, going into that, knowing that God had been there the whole time, it it was scary, but I had faith that he would be there for me. So now with everybody going through this COVID-19 thing, and it's scary, you know, it's scary. You're scared for your grandparents. You're scared for your parents. You're scared for your children. Like, do I pull my kids out of school and live in a bubble for the rest of my life? You know, wrapped in hand sanitizer. <laughs> and, um, you know, now I just listen every, every day. Lord, what do you want me to do? 
Lord, you know, nobody can eat fast food. So everybody's like losing weight, feeling great. <laughs> and um, I just, I forgot the question. I've been talking so much. I'm so sorry. <laughs> What's going on with you athletically? <laughs> with yes. All right. Okay. So I'm training at home. And um, I, act, I can't, because of chemotherapy and everything that I went through last year, I can't train in public locations. So I built a high jump apron in my backyard. I'm lifting in the garage. Me and my husband are battling each other. And I gave him my training program so he could be a good training partner. Now he's beating me. So I'm like crazy angry about that. But yeah, so that's, that's what's going on. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. So you, so you mentioned what training looks like, you know, while you're in, while you're being sheltered in. Now, not all of our student athletes have the opportunity to have their own high jump apron <laughs> brought to their house, much less space to bring, yeah. to bring that in, right? What are three things or, you know, let's come to mind of uh, that you attribute to your athletic success? So I'll tell you, it's definitely, it's really simple. Um, I put God first in everything that I do. Um, the word says, put ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. But a lot of times as athletes, we're driven and we want, you know, the prize. We want to win and we end up putting that first. We're, we're willing to do significant sacrifices to get it. But I realized at the times when I did that, everything, my life was a complete mess, you know, and um, it even, even got to the point, like my freshman year, and you, I know Shanta knows about this, I put a guy first, and I put track first, and I got to the point where I actually wanted to commit suicide, and I tried in my freshman year of college, and that was a huge turning point for me. Shanta came and got me, and a couple of my teammates rallied behind me, and they were like, look, Shante, this is not the way. And so I turned back to God wholeheartedly, completely repented. So not just saying, God, please forgive me. I was stupid. Completely like, Lord, I am not living my life for you. I completely turn around and I will live my life for you going forward. And that next year, I think that that's when I made, I made my first Olympic team. And then I got to the point where it's like, okay, I'm going to be accountable and everything that you want me to do. So I made the decision that, you know, Lord, I say I'm a Christian, but on the outside, I don't look like one. And how could I say I'm a Christian if I've never read your Bible from the beginning to the end? I don't even like, seriously. So I made a commitment to read the Bible from the beginning to the end. The first thing I did every day, giving the Lord the first fruits of my day. So every little principle that I could pick up in the Bible, I tried to apply it. And I was like, okay, Lord, I'm giving you the first fruits of my day. And he honored that. And even though, like, even though it doesn't make sense, the greatest victories I've ever had have been when I have been the least equipped. Amen. I want to, I just want to piggyback off of this real quick, because, you know, you mentioned the solidity of your faith, but then also there is that, that roller coaster that yeah. comes along with it. And I'm going to, and I'm going to interject this because, all right, you turned your life around, right? Yeah. But then you get diagnosed with cancer later. Yes. On. So that just speaks to the fact that Christian walk, <laughs> the Christian journey, it's not, it's not effortless. It is yeah. not without its challenges. It is not without its downs. Yes, there are the ups and there are the downs and there are the plateaus. Yes. There was a time right before this happened that you mentioned, um, that, you mentioned that, you know, you, you stepped away again and then recommit and then came back again. Can you share with them a little bit about that as well? Yeah, so I was going through a really difficult time, um, you know, in my marriage, with the kids, with work and everything. And, you know, a couple of incidents happened to where I was harboring bitterness mm -hmm. inside of me. I was harboring this bitterness, but on the outside, I was like, oh, I forgive you. And, you know, but in the inside, that bitterness was festering. And I believe, like with anything that happens, I think it's easy to blame circumstances or say, why me? How could this happen? But we have so many promises 
provision and protection in God's word that we have to believe that that applies to us. So if somehow that there's something that was able to get through our shield, look for the areas of weakness in, in your life. And for me, I was harboring unforgiveness. And so when I got this cancer diagnosis, I was just like, oh man. And it's like my eyes were open. And the first thing that I did is get on my knees and repent. Not say, I've done nothing wrong. Because I thought I was doing everything right. I'm paying my tithe. I'm going to church. I'm ministering, you know, to young kids. I had just decided that I was going to join FCA full time, like literally within weeks of getting the cancer diagnosis. And then it happens. And God, when you say, God, I lay myself bare before you. Show me the areas of my life that are unlike you. He'll do it. And he'll be faithful. And he showed me that my husband had did something like a year and a half ago, not cheating or anything like that, but just something really make me mad. And I was punishing him for it, like all the time. Every time we got in an argument, I bring it up. Every time that, you know, something went wrong, I'd like throw it back in his face and kind of making him suffer for it over and over again. But God doesn't do that to us. When he forgives us, he wipes our slate clean. And he, and he washes us like we're new. And so I was doing that to my husband. Then my kids, they were like on 30 when I was like on two. And so I'm like constantly up, shut up, shut up, you know? And I'm like, I am their mother. They look to me for compassion and love and grace. And I wasn't showing that to them. I was showing them a, great, a grumpy, angry mom. That was their life. I'm their only mom. And so as I repented of those things, it's like the layers started coming off and I could start feeling God's comfort, letting me know that I'm going to be okay. He says, now I will heal your land. I'll forgive you and I'll heal your land. Wow. And so, yeah, anyways, <laughs> I'll go on for an hour. About I, wanted, <laughs> I wanted you to share these things because well, I recognize, I learned this earlier. I mean, not earlier, but in recent years, and you and I talked about this, where we all have our reasons for coming to Christ, right? We all have our reasons that we accept him in the first place. We have our reasons that we say yes, whether it be, I want to be a better athlete, yeah. or if it's that my self-esteem is low and I need a friend and Jesus is a friend, <laughs> you know? like whatever the reasons he draws us in. Yeah. But then God showed me something. He showed me how, what ends up happening is that we take our desires and we make those desires idols over God. Yeah. Because now when we've accomplished that thing, we have that thing. Now all of us is like, okay, well, you know, thanks God, you helped me out. Now I can go ahead and live my life, right? Yeah. Or it's, you did not say yes to me, to that one big thing that was supposed to be my number one yes. And so, there's something wrong with you or there's something wrong with my Bible or there's something wrong with this, this, this Christian thing is not working out. And so we turn away, but that constant decision to keep coming back, to keep coming back, to keep the relationship going, that is what makes the difference for us at the beginning and the end of the day to maintain that relationship and that relationship not be based off of, I mean, if you think about any relationship that you have, who wants to be in a relationship with someone that is only in that relationship with them because they want something out of them? So you just want to be loved for being you and you want to be known for being you. Same with our relationship with God and, and embrace those ups and those downs. And my last question for you. So like I said, as long as I have known you, you have had this and when i and when i it's like it, i don't it's it, it's faith it's confidence it's like there are there are times when like shantae would just be like on 10 and i'm just being cynical like i ain't gonna do <laughs> like I, god is not gonna show up in this way it doesn't <laughs> work like that and then just see it happen yeah. i want to ask you where did that come from was that wired in you did that develop over time? Was that an investment from your, because you grew up in, in, the, in the church household, but I mean, it's just so, I, like for lack of a bit, and this is not an insulting way. It's like, it's almost reckless faith that she <laughs> has. Like God said it, like, I mean, and you heard it when she said, God told me I have breast cancer. So now I'm going to change my diet. Like, okay. <laughs> Where did that come from? Yeah, I mean, it can be 
crazy faith or just crazy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like, I, I think at a very early age, I started, it was really important to me, like if God is real and he's a living God, then I want to be able to hear his voice and making it a priority to be able to hear his voice. And, and the word says that my sheep will hear my voice and they will follow and no other voice they will, or and no other voice they will follow. That's, that's my voice. And I started tuning my ear to hear his voice. And so if I know he says it, I know I could trust. It. And if I could trust it, I know that, that me doing something outwardly is a, is a testament to the fact that I trust him. Um, so when, you know, I, when I was four years old, I saw the Olympics and I was like, man, I want to do that. As I gotten older, I started realizing this is something that the Lord's going to do for me. I started hearing him say, you will go to the Olympics. And so when I had the first opportunity, my sophomore year in college, I was like, I'm going, you know, I think that the hardest time, um, was when all year in 2016, I heard that the, um, Lord tell me you're going to get your first Olympic medal. And I was like, yes, yes. And then I go to Rio and it's my, you know, I'm the last jumper of the competition and I do not get that medal. And I, and in my mind, I'm retired. Like I'm not doing it anymore. Like, how do you have faith? Like, okay, Lord, are they going to change the rules? Like, like, how is this going to happen? But I still believe that he said it was going to, that he was going to give me that medal. And so what ended up happening with some of you guys know the story and some of you guys don't. Um, three women that competed in front of me from the Olympics eight years before tested positive for doping. And some type of rule that I had nothing to do with writing made it so that they were able to go back eight years, test those samples, bust those three girls, and give me the medal. <laughs> and I'm like, that's the type, but that's the type of God I serve. He's doing stuff like that for me my whole life. And you know, it's it's not just for me. In our word, God says that you do it for you, Carla, and for Olivia, and for Charlize, and Darlene, and Jill, like, and let's see, Nicole, <laughs> and Tony. <laughs> All of you, like, we serve a God that will do that for you, too. And so get in your word, know what it's his promise it says, open your mouth, spit it out, put it into the atmosphere, and know that God is a, a God who honors his word. Amen. Yeah, I'm so glad that you shared that because I remember she promised her kids that she was going to get them a dog. She came back without the medal and she was like, you know, in faith, I'm going to get them the dog anyway. And I'm like, okay, Shantae, you go ahead and do that. The girl got the medal. Three people, three, three people get kicked out. So you're like, I don't know. I see that and I just find that phenomenal. But this is what I want to take. I, I really want you ladies to hear. I don't because I'm always very mindful whenever we hear stories like that. This is not a like a, you know, go do something crazy. No, not know? claim it not like that. <laughs> yes, this is absolutely where is understanding number one, hearing God speaking to you, mm -hmm. learning God's voice when he speaks to you and the way that he speaks to you. Because his promises for you aren't aren't the same promises for Shantae. They're not the same promises for Carla. They're not, they're not the same promises for me. They're very unique to you. Number two, you have to go through that journey with him as well. Because it's a relationship. And then as you hear his voice, as you and you, and it and it's, it's a trial and error sometimes, you know? It's a trial and error, but eventually you start to understand, like, oh God, like I. God speaks to me through music or God speak. When I hear something come up three times and from three totally different sources, I tune in. I'm like, okay, God, you're saying something to me now because that is not a coincidence. Right. Yeah. But you have to take that time to tune in. And then number three, it's the acting on it. Mm -hmm. The difference between believing and faith is action. If you feel that, if you, if God, is, and, and I will use something as simple as the truth of his word, where he says, do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, bring your request to God. This is what he's telling you to do, right? But then he also says in his word, I know the plans that I have for you. My plans are to, are, my, are not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. 
believing says, okay, I'm in this challenging times and yes, God, your plans are to give me hope in the future. Your plans are not to harm me. Yes, God, your plans are not to harm me. But, but it doesn't always look like that. It looks more like your plans are not to harm me. Your plans are not to harm me. Your, your word is true. What am I doing in this? I'm worrying. Mm -hmm. The act of worrying is the statement that you don't believe what you say that you believe. That is the difference between belief and faith is the action she heard god say something is going on in your body specifically so specifically you have cancer you can believe she could have easily been like oh that's my mind that's just my mind that's just my mind that's just my mind that's just my mind but she could lean on the fact that his sheep number one she has to know that she's his sheep she's her she's his sheep right <laughs> and as his sheep she hears his voice, not because she made it up, not because it felt good to her, but because the word of God says, my sheep, my sheep know my voice and a stranger's voice they will follow. At some point, you have to not just read that word, not just say that you believe it, but now apply it to your life and say, hey, if God says that I'm his sheep, and I know his voice and a stranger's voice that I'm not following, I won't follow, then this message that is resonating, that I know it's not my voice, I know it's not Satan, because I know that Satan speaks in like, like doubt terms. That's not what it is. This, is this, this feels different. At some point, you got to say, you know what, God, this is you. This is you. Then you want me to move. You want me to do, you don't want me to worry in this time. You want me to know that I have your back. And the way that I am going to prove that I believe that this is it, I'm going to make the decision not to worry. I'm going to mm -hmm. laugh. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move forward. All right. Oh, Shantae, thank you so much. We've got 10 minutes left and I will would like to open the word, open up the floor for you to ask your questions. I think we have, it's, it's light enough where if you want to um, just unmute, if you have any questions for Shantae, please. Or if you'd rather put in the chat, Olivia is sorting, Olivia is watching our chat box. No questions? I have a question. I'm just so happy to see, see Shantae. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I mentioned the, the one thing that I can say, and it's not just related to Shantae, but Shanta, I remember you as a student athlete, and she probably like, wait, what you about to say? <laughs> as a student athlete, when I would pick up kids, that's back with basketball, we had practice at, we had to be there at 4.30 in the morning, so it was gone off. And I would pick up kids to go to the gym really early, but there were times I would see this one walking around campus at old dog 30 in the morning. And, and it wasn't at 3.30, but it was probably, maybe it was like 5, 5.30, sometimes like that, 6 o'clock. And one day I remember saying, why were you walking around campus at 6, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning? And it was her prayer walk. Wow. And, and it was also during that time where you had had the, uh, I think it was before the ACL injury. Well, it definitely was before the ACL. It was just the, it was the foot or the shin. I, girl, yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, but so many of them. <laughs> it was one of them. But I remember that time. And, you know, even as you talk about Shantae, but your own diligence with that, you hear his voice and you respond mm -hmm. to be up that time of morning walking around campus when I know the bed was calling. Is and and it's a lot. E it is really easy uh, on a college campus to be able to do that. But I mean, this time, even right now, to me, is a testament to your faith and your journey as you go along as well. So I mean, I'm I just I'm I'm excited to be in this uh, in this time in this chat right now. Uh, but know that your journey has spoken volumes to me, even as you've continued to cultivate it now at Georgia Tech, still being at Georgia Tech. And working with our different teams so thank you thank you carla thank you for that mm -hmm. there's someone someone else said they had a question oh yeah, yeah. i had a question um uh my question was uh how was it juggling um with the three kids early on in their life as far as everything that you were doing how, how was that challenge how did you navigate through those waters yes i see you juggling now <laughs> yes <laughs> 
so what I did, and I had my first child, um, was it my junior year, senior year, senior year of college, my senior year of college. And um, I just made a priority to get the most important things done first. I figured that the most alert that I'm going to be is early in the morning because as the day goes on, if you're up all night and, you know, having to do things with baby, I try to hit front load my day with all the things that are important. So the things that I absolutely have to get done, I get them done first. And then I have to have grace for myself. So things, if I didn't get to them, it's okay. It's okay. As long as I got the most important things done and um, don't put so much pressure on your, you to try to be perfect because nobody's perfect, mm -hmm. but just be a great mommy to that baby and to those babies first. Then you got to take care of yourself. Well, you got to take care of yourself first, then take care right. of the babies and then let everything else come after. But the part of taking care of yourself is being connected with God and just finding ways for that time management. Try not to like waste time because mm. easily waste time, social media, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, that was the first thing to go. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. First thing to go, but definitely just try to just try to get as much as you can done first thing in the morning. Because if you have something planned for five o'clock, five o'clock might not come because baby might need mommy or something that you didn't expect turns up. So, thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? What about prayer requests? How can we be praying for you, just as a team, and then even now on the call? Seven. Or let me put it this way. What are you praying for right now? That's what I would like to hear. I'm praying for Passover for everyone that, you know, we love and care about as this pandemic is touching so many parts of the world. I'm praying that just as the Israelites had Passover, that we'll also experience Passover and God's provision for us. So I'm praying Passover on each of our households and the households of our Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I'll actually say that right now, my prayers, um, maybe along the line of what Shantae was saying, what is this now? Two and a half months we've been kind of yeah. took away, two and a half months. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, one of the most unique pieces about this time, it's been cultivating the discipline. Uh, one, I actually make my bed now. For 20 plus years at tech, I would just get up in the morning and go, I was like, um, I'm coming back to the bed. I'm not going to be here during the day. But I literally make my bed every day. And so the discipline of that, but in addition to making the bed, it is every morning I have quiet time. And, and it's like my day isn't complete or I can't begin the day unless I do that. Mm -hmm. And before it would be, it would be those hit or miss quiet times you try to stop on. I would try to establish them at noon. I'll do it in the middle of the day. That doesn't happen. You got kids coming in nonstop. Um, I'd set it in the evening. Oh, no, practice went late. You can't do that. So it was having the practice and cultivating that to remain disciplined and, and obedient uh, mm -hmm. in the midst of that. So that's been my prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else are you guys praying for that we can partner with you and yes i'd say um like for my small group we've been um going through the book like art of listening prayer, um, art of listening prayer. oh nice um, so i'd say like growing my relationship with god mm. wonderful well shante would you like to pray or, or shall i pray for our group um, I don't mind praying. All right. Yeah. All right. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for this time of fellowship. We're able to come together, even though we're all separated, and that we know that you're in the midst of us. Father God, we just continue to ask that you pour out your blessings on us and continue to tune our ears to your voice. Mm -hmm. Father God, we know that you are the most important part of our lives. So Father God, allow our lives to start being structured so that we can see that you are the priority and that everything else comes secondary to you. Father God, I'm praying for continued health 
and strength for each and every person on this call and allow that health and strength to extend to everybody that they care about. I pray for your provision and your protection. But Lord, in the midst of everything, please allow each of us to have that quiet time individually with you to allow us to have more opportunities where we can come together in groups, study your word and become more like you. I thank you for allowing us to be your disciples, allowing each of us to be fruitful and make disciples, for spreading your gospel and allowing your word, your living word, to become alive and well in our lives and extending to the lives of those that we come in touch with. Father God, you are uh, do all the power, all the honor, and all the glory. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.